cat? What did you think I was feeding? Hey, it was the kid. Ah, she was just watching me draw. <laughs> so did you get them? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's over 5,000 bucks. But like you said, we'll have them forever. Where'd you get the money? My mom. She said any girl could get me back in the church is worth her weight in wedding rings. Ah, 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 ah. Until tomorrow, sweetheart. Now don't be nervous. You're gonna be just great, all right? Thank you all for coming, folks. Uh, the rehearsal is over. If I could just see the groom and the best man up by the altar, please, for a moment. Thank you. Do you know what time your parents will be arriving? <laughs> Tomorrow morning. Their plane gets in at 9. We are so looking forward to meeting them. <laughs> this has been such a miracle for us. <sighs> Before he met you, I didn't know where he'd end up. It's a miracle for me, too. Look, I, I, I didn't mean that you had to give up painting completely. I mean, come on, I was pissed off when I said that. It's not important now, and there really isn't enough space to paint here. Wait a minute. Wait, didn't you tell me once that all you lived for was to be a great painter? To get your name in, in goofy magazines like this one here? Well, I didn't mean that. All I want now is to marry you and be with you forever. Oh, <laughs> uh, wait, wait a minute, not that one, that's mine. Quinn, it's just going into storage. No way! You gave that to me, man. Besides, it took me a long time to carve this frame. Well, someday, we'll unpack these and we'll show them to our kids. Maybe we should just go to bed and get started on those kids right now. Enjoy your flight. Hi, I have a one-way reservation to New York. Flight 311. My name is Agatha Hulk. Huh. Yes. One-way coach fare to LaGuardia Airport. Total fare $450. $450? They told me it was $215. Oh, no. That's a special advance purchase fare into Kennedy Airport. I have to leave right now. Well, you could fly into LaGuardia Airport at the regular fare. We still have seats available on... Arriving Chicago passenger Nicole Wall, please report to gate 12. Arriving Chicago passenger Nicole Wall, please report to gate 12. luggage with them at all times. Please report any suspicious behavior to the nearest gate agent. Maintenance, please dial 17. Maintenance, please dial 17. You wouldn't happen to have a cigarette, would you? No. You wouldn't happen to have some aspirin, would you? 
No. You have a headache? I missed my connection. I was supposed to be in New Hampshire by now. You know? You look like a musician. Yeah? Mm-hmm. So, uh, why New Hampshire? I'm going to college. As far away from my mother as possible. Bad scene, huh? Not if you like living on a pig farm. <laughs> so, uh, what kind of college are you going to? Small, but private. Expensive, I'll bet. Yeah, but I got a scholarship. I'm an artist. I'm going to New York. Those are your paintings? Mm-hmm. But uh, my next series will be much bigger. Six or eight feet wide, if I can find a decent studio to work in. Oh, that's my flight. Guess I'm finally out of here. Flight 1798 for New Hampshire will now be at gate Good luck. Barely made it. Aisle or window? Aisle. You didn't check your luggage? I'll check it for you here. Go right on board.
Excuse me? Can you tell me where I can catch a bus to New York? Brienne? Hi. I'm Janelle Polk, your new roommate. I saw your violin. Could a Skycap please respond? Hi. Hi. Um, I heard that you missed your flight in Chicago, so I thought yeah, I'd that's come right. meet you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're from you're from Kansas, right? Mm-hmm. I'm from Boston. It's it's just outside, about 60 miles from here. Do you have, do you have your baggage claim? I I think I lost it. I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to be rude. It's 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 right here. It's, Attached to your ticket. <laughs> I have a porter, um, so everything's taken care of. We'll just go to my car and, and don't worry because you haven't missed much. Orientation starts this afternoon, but we better get going. <laughs> okay. Shall I put your bag in the car? It's really heavy. No thanks, I'll get it myself. Let me help, man. Wow. Does this stuff come with the room? No, it's mine. But you can use whatever you want. I have tons of CDs and stuff. I, I took the bed by the window because you weren't here, but if you want to flip for it, it that's no, fine. No, I'm happy. It's okay. No problem. Okay. So, um, how far is New York? Um, about 200 miles. I have a cousin there that I'd like to visit. Oh. Yeah. Is there a way that I could get down there? Um... There's a bus that you can take in town, but I don't think you'll have time till after Thanksgiving. Hmm. Oh. Now, are these your folks? That's my dad and my stepmother. Mm. That's my mom. Right there. She died when I was three. My stepmother died last year. Wow. And dad must have a hex on him. Had a tough time. Well, I guess we should get to orientation. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, you know, why don't you go ahead because I have to change first. Are you sure? Mm hmm. Okay, well, I'll save you a seat. Okay. It's in the great it's Whoa. In the, it's in the history building. Okay. Okay. Just lock the door. I will. Good. I'll see you. town is from here? Uh, yeah, it's uh, over that way past the water tower. How far is that? Uh, about 10 miles. Do you have a car? No. Well, oh, thanks anyway. What we stress to our incoming students is the importance of taking risks, exploring new horizons, testing yourselves. 
This is your first year, a first milestone, but please don't be afraid to take chances. If you discover a course that interests you, talk to your guidance counselor. I hope you don't mind. I borrowed your code. No, it's, I told you it's okay. Thank you. Each of you has already met with your guidance counselor, and we want you to develop that relationship. So, um, think you can give me a ride later into town? Yeah, why do you need to go? I'll tell you later. Okay. Hey, sweet over here! The science department faculty has two Nobel Prize winners and over 30 members of the National Academy of Sciences. It's located in the oldest building on campus. But before I take you there, I'd like to take you all the way up the hill to show you our newest building. This is our brand new art building, built at a cost of nearly $9 million. We've tried to create an ideal working environment for the artist using natural light, large areas of unobstructed wall space, and partitioned work areas for the more advanced students. We also have a sculpture bay. And several of our graduates have worked in the permanent collections at the Whitney Museum, the Guggenheim, and the Museum of Modern Art. Two currently have paintings in the Whitney Biennial. I'm just not feeling very well. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you still need to go into town? Mm. I changed my mind. Yeah, you know, I was thinking about, uh, what the counselor said, how we could change our courses. Oh, no, she was talking about next term. This term's classes are already locked in. We start Monday. Mm. Yeah. Well, let's go to dinner. I'm not very hungry. Well, we could go later. That's okay. Nah, I don't think I'm gonna have dinner tonight. Well, you could just come down and have dessert or something. <sighs> you know what you have to do? You have to make some friends around here. <laughs> there are gonna be lots of people down there. So go down and eat, okay? Yeah. Okay.
Do you ride? No, but I wear hats. <laughs> so what's your first class? Orchestra. Hmm. May I see your violin? I used to play. You can have it. I'm not a musician. I'm a painter. Well, then why did you sign up for orchestra? Because my parents wouldn't sign for my scholarship unless I agreed to keep studying the violin. Hmm. My dad doesn't tell me what to study. He's more concerned with my image. You know, clothing and so on. <laughs> you can't tell, let your dad tell you how to dress. You have to be your own person. Like you? Mm-hmm. I'm on my own now. And if I don't want to play the violin, I won't. Hmm. Right. What are you doing? Whatever it takes. I need to change all my classes from music to art. You have to make an appointment with your counselor. What's your name? Brandwire. That'll be Mrs. Donnelly. She's in the office right behind you. Well, it says here you had a personal interview with her in July. I'm sure she'll remember you. I can fit you in tomorrow, say two o'clock. Great. Okay. Where is that? Right down the street. We were only married one month, and then when I just took off. I really hate to get rid of these. But I'm pregnant and I need the money so bad. We're going to have to forgive her. Get this. The police checked their computer. The parents of Darcy Palmer reported her as missing six months ago. They didn't know anything about a wedding. They didn't even know what a bitch is. She set me up! Quinn, Quinn, please calm down. Now, I know you're feeling pain, but you need to heal. No. You know what I need? I need a drink. You know where I'm gonna go? I'm going to a bar. The same sleazy bar where I met her six months ago. Quinn!
move you to the two o'clock class. All right, bye-bye. in New Hampshire where a counselor has been seriously injured after using a bottle of eye drops. Details are sketchy at this time. We can tell Hi. you what we do know right now. The victim is... Janelle, have you seen this? I just heard. It's so sick. Oh, oh. have you met Zoe, Sabrina? No. Well, this is my roommate, Janelle. Hi. Hi. Hey. Hi. Oh, eye. there I am. Look, so we have our <laughs> right now. In the meantime, representatives from Eckhart Pharmaceutical have arrived here at the college in New Hampshire to try to determine exactly when the acid may have been put into this that bottle. This is going to give me nightmares. Why would she have brain damage? This will fear gas today right into her brain. Across the country to return any unopened bottles of the allergy relief eye drops with the. I wonder how many other bottles they messed with. Three, four. What is abnormal behavior to one person makes perfect sense to another. That's why it's so difficult to define abnormal. And that's why I asked you to be analytical in your description of an abnormal personality. I enjoyed the rigor with which most of you took to the challenge, particularly Marnie's impeccably researched dissection of the soul of Catherine the Great. Now, one of you decided not to follow my instructions and struck out on her own in a direction which I could not have imagined. Brian, would you please stand and read aloud your, I'm not sure what to call it, your uh, portrait in words, I suppose. Am I in trouble? No, proceed. There once was a little girl who lived in a nice little house with her loving, normal, little parents. But she just couldn't be the nice little girl they wanted her to be. So why did all the dolls end up with their heads twisted off? Why did all the pets die? She felt like there was something dark living inside of her making her do terrible things. And she couldn't stop it. Her parents stopped being so nice after a while. They tried to rip the evil out of her, but that just made the darkness inside of her bigger and stronger and angry. <laughs> that dark thing took a deep breath and blew those little parents right out of her life. The little girl looked just the same, but she wasn't the same anymore. What was left could not be stopped. 
Just let them try. Just let them try. To stop me. Though that certainly wasn't the assignment. Maybe it should have been. Imagine what it feels like to be an abnormal personality. Now, that's an A for creativity, Brian, but an F for the assignment. I'm sorry, but you're just going to have to master a few of the chilly, unemotional facts of psychology if you're going to pass at midterm. Understood? Well, thank you. You want to join us tonight? We're meeting some Harvard guys downtown. Oh, I'd love to. But I have that F to make up. Oh, um, yeah. Why don't you give Janelle a call? She has a car, you know. Oh, mm, a car. Oh, yeah. Okay, have fun. All right, See ya. Dear Mom and Dad, it was raining today, so I'm staying inside to catch up on my correspondence. Here's a picture of me and some of my friends in the dorm. I feel funny going with your friends if you're not coming. They're your friends, too. Hey, don't be depressed about psych class. Professor Knapp is simply a jerk. <laughs> it's so true. I mean, it's just such a load, all that crap about taking creative risks. They're all such hypocrites. Hello? No, this is a friend of, well, probably in the library. <laughs> she practically lives in the library. Usually pretty late. Would you like to leave a message? Is that your parents? Mm-hmm. You know, you can give them the number to the room here. Ah, uh, it's okay. If my parents knew I had a phone in my room, they'd be calling every night. Oh. You don't want the hassle? No. Nope. Oh, God. I wish I could do that, you know? If my dad just, just tune him out. If my dad were rich, I wouldn't tune him out. Do you want me to close the door? Please. I took notes all week. How am I supposed to write my paper if I lost my notes? You're the best student in the class, Marnie, but how am I supposed to grade you if you don't turn in the assignment? I'm telling you, Professor Knapp gave her an F. It wasn't her fault. That was so unfair what happened today. Tell me about it. Wow. Where'd you get that jacket? Uh, it's Janelle's. I helped her get ready for a big date with her dad. She has the most amazing clothes that she never wears. I hate her. So why is her dad in town? He comes about once a month to lecture on economics. I've heard him speak. He's incredibly smart. And he's gorgeous, and he owns half the campus. Owns? Helped finance it. Especially the newer buildings, the new dorms, the art department. You know, you should meet him sometime. He must know everyone in the art world. Gallery owners, collectors, oh. everyone. Huh. Well, is he coming to pick Janelle up here? No, no. She's meeting him over the lecture hall. Mm. Janelle! Hi! Hi. What you doing? Um, we're going to dinner. Ah, oh, you're so lucky. I stayed late in the art department. I'm starving. Dad, this is Brian, my roommate. You didn't tell me your dad was coming to town. It is a pleasure to meet you. My pleasure. I've read about you. You helped build that new art department. My wife was the driving force behind that one. We, ha we have to go. We have a reservation.
wine, sir. Are you driving yourself home? Quite sober. <clears throat> You're planning to come home for Thanksgiving, aren't you? I suppose. I feel badly for him. I just get so depressed around him. You know, he just sits in his study and broods. Oh, it's because he's living in the past. <laughs> I'm sorry. What he thinks is the past. He spends all of his time brooding over a woman who never loved him. All she wanted was his money. That's a horrible thing to say. Why? Well, because she's dead. And he loved her. And now he's alone, so I guess I can't not go home for Thanksgiving. Why not? Oh, because he's my father. And I love him. And he's a colossal boy. You said so yourself. <laughs> You know, I have an idea. You do? Mm-hmm. Why don't you invite some of your friends to come home with you? Sabrina and I would love to see how rich people live. Okay. And Zoe and Marnie, too. This must be a really big house. It's a very big house. <sighs> the horse was away, the carriage was laid, the white and drifting snow. cars and there's a tennis court around the back if you care to play this is john good afternoon Hi. Miss. Good afternoon. if you need anything you just ask john except on sundays when the whole staff is off <laughs> heathcliff lives over here in the north wing so we'll just leave him alone in his own century and get into trouble come on all right <laughs> let me take that for you ma'am peasants have been getting a bit too Haughty lately. Don't you think? Go off with their heads. Cheers, <laughs> <laughs> uh, And uh, bring us another roast. Pig. Yes, and throw the bones to our <laughs> husbands in the dungeon. Which one do we castrate tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> oh, John. Oh, John. We won't castrate you, John. Oh, thank you, Miss. I promise. <laughs> Is this the 19th century? Something like that. What are you doing here? I got lost. Well, the 1960s are uh, straight back down the hallway, and the rest of the 20th century is right around the corner. Do you wish we weren't here? I'm happy that Janelle is having a nice Thanksgiving. She wants the same for you. And she's so proud of you. She tells everybody that you're just the greatest. Doing them. 
of him. I'm looking around. Mm. Well, come downstairs with us, please. I will. We're having fun. <laughs> You like that painting? No, not really. But uh, yeah, it's worth a ton. It's worth uh, two tons. My wife bought that painting in Paris. First or second? Wife. Second. Well, she certainly had expensive taste. <laughs> I noticed you watching us outside. You could have joined us. No, I'm not in a very celebratory mood these days. What are you looking at? Did you know that you almost have the perfect Roman nose? Turn sideways, just like this. And that's it. Do you know what I'd like to do with you? Brand, come on, you guys, let's make some hot tubbers. Hello, girls. That's good. Thank you. I like the way you gave him a haircut. I hope you fixed the bags <laughs> into my hat. Oh, what bags? <laughs> We've been looking all over for you. <laughs> You'd look good with short hair. Oh, thanks. Why don't you go ahead with your friends? I, I got some things I should do. Okay. I'll show it to you when I'm done. Now, I'm hoping this will convince him to let me cut his hair. <laughs> you should. <laughs> I've come to cut your hair. What on earth are you talking about? Cut. Huh? Snip, snip. <laughs> come here. Turn around. Just like Samson and Delilah. <laughs> hey, Russell. Mm, let's see. Uh, in the bathroom, darling. Come on in. I'm giving your father a haircut. He really <laughs> needs one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, I see. Well, I'll have John send you up some champagne. Sound good? Good. You know, your father's really coming out of his shell. Yeah, he is, and he's making a complete fool out of himself. I hate him. He's just starting to come around after losing his wife, that's all. He's really not such a bad guy, Janelle. Well, he's not your father. That's why I can do things for him that you can't. Such as? Get him to lighten up. Stop living in the past. You know what? This is between him and me, and I really want you to leave him alone. Period. Fine. Fine. Only... I invited him to join us for Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> Sorry.
<laughs> Go down to aisle four, it's in an amber colored bottle. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. On the fourth shelf. Just about it. Uh, yeah, Free pizza! Free pizza for anyone who wants it down the hall. Yeah, Follow that girl. <laughs> Janelle, want some yes. pizza? I can't believe you did this. I have to go out to dinner. Who are you going out to dinner with? My dad. Oh, you didn't tell me he was coming to town. Yes. Well, maybe I'll just have one little piece. <laughs> Are you sure you don't want me to call a nurse? No, I just want to sleep. <coughs> Look, I don't think it was the pizza. Don't moment. mention food. <coughs> My dad, when he calls me, <coughs> mm -hmm. if <coughs> he calls. think that she's all right? I mean, maybe I should call a doctor. No, it's just a little tummy upset. She just wants to sleep, that's all. And I knew if you called the room, you'd wake her. Well, it's very thoughtful of you to come all the way over here to tell me. I don't mind. I didn't have anything to do tonight anyway. So Winton College is just a stop for me. You know, a chance for me to build my portfolio on my way to New York. <laughs> You're so sure of yourself. My first wife was like that. Janelle's mom. Yeah. 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 Janelle is nothing like her mother. She's much more like me. I guess that's why we have such a hard time. Uh-uh. <laughs> no way are you as insecure as Janelle. you come from? I mean, what, did you spring from Zeus's head fully formed? I mean, you have to be somebody's little girl. I don't belong to anyone. I blew off my parents a long, long time ago. And I plan to never see them again. I am not a little girl like Chanel. You're right, you're not, I agree. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to patronize. I just meant that I have long-range plans. My parents just didn't understand it. And you can't set limits on yourself when you're an artist. You know? Maybe after dinner you could show me your paintings. I'd love that. These are very powerful images. You must, you must realize how much they contradict your appearance. No, I never thought of it like that. When I paint, I deal with forces outside of my rational control. I don't even remember painting that face. Where do images like that come from for you? A woman crammed into a box. I don't know where they come from. I don't know what they mean. I don't care. Oh my God, I wish I could go with my imagination the way you do.
When it comes right down to it, all we are is energy. And when something truly moves you, when you feel it deep down inside, you shouldn't fight it. You should go with it. What's important to you at this very moment? I guess what comes to mind is Janelle. You were sick. I didn't want him to phone the room and wake you. I mean, God, I tried to do something nice for you. You just jumped down my throat. I'm not jumping down your throat. I just asked. How was I supposed to know that he would invite me to dinner? And what's so wrong with saying yes so he wouldn't have to eat alone, huh? I don't know. I'm just, I'm confused, you know. Obviously, I don't understand what's going on here. Well, all we did was talk about you. <laughs> How proud he is of you. And what did he say? Just how you and him are so alike. You know, you never let him down. It used to be that way. Look. <laughs> I just feel lucky to have the chance to know the both of you. Well, I've never had a friend quite like you myself. <laughs> I have some really good news. You do? Your father wants to sponsor a gallery showing of my work. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Another message from your mom. Thanks. Can I paint? I feel like Bran just crumbles away. And a creature emerges that's a stranger. You know, the other night, you said that it sounded a lot like being in love. Well, it's actually more like sex. What are you thinking about at this very moment? <laughs> I can't even tell you. Why not? Russell? Oh. You were supposed to meet me at 3.30. I'm sorry, I know. I, I completely lost track of the time. I'm sorry. I've been waiting for over half an hour. See you Monday. Okay. Janelle? Have fun. Janelle, I just stopped by to tell her about the photographer who's coming on Monday, and we got to talking. If you want to be in there with her, that's fine, but don't make plans with Janelle, me. don't be silly. This is not about me choosing between you and Brienne. I didn't mean to have an outburst. I apologize. I know I'm not a great athlete or artist, but my consistency should count for something. I want you to love me for who I am. And if that's being selfish, then I'm sorry. You're not selfish. Wait, wait. You're not selfish. Brienne is simply a girl with talent who needs a break, and I happen to think she deserves it. She's a beautiful young woman, yes, but I have no other interest in her. Mm, that's good. I hope not. Because you're old enough to be her father.
Jack's gonna select one of the slides for the ad and place it in the major art publication. <laughs> oh, and also, there's an art critic coming from the Boston Globe to talk with you tomorrow afternoon at 3. <laughs> the newer pieces have a kind of sinister elegance to it. What are you thinking? You're painting. It's kind of like a lot that. of fun. Just have the conversation. Have the conversation with them and hear what they think. Oh. I, I mean, look really at all these people. This girl should be next to her. No, I did. Maybe he's truly fond of her. Is that so terrible? How would you feel if it was your father? <laughs> Have you ever seen him, father? <laughs> I'm not. You know, maybe you're really talented. I'm very comfortable with my talent. <laughs> <laughs> The other thing I wanted to tell you is that there's a man here tonight from the Renwick in New York. Now, if everything goes okay, he's going to invite you to show there in April when they have a little gap in their schedule. What do you think? Hey! Oh, <laughs> thank you! What are you doing? Oh, that's my dream. Are you enjoying the show? Um, <clears throat> it's raw talent. I guess that's what people respond to. <laughs> what about you? <laughs> I think I'm gonna drink. <laughs> right on. All right. Sounds good. Congratulations. I heard you sold something last night. Three pieces, all undervalued. You must have been out celebrating. Is that where you were all night? Now that is none of your business. It is my business. He's my father. Did it ever occur to you that perhaps there's something in this for him, too? That perhaps... I can offer him things that no one else can. You should know that I can have you expelled from this school. <laughs> I decided to clean your side of the room last night. You mean you went through my things? I did. And guess what I found? I found Marnie's missing notebook and test papers. None of them belong to you. I think Dean Kirkland should know. I'm sorry. Gotcha. 
are you doing here? You think I want to miss this? Huh? Who the hell is Brianne Dwyer? A silly man. Guess you came to the wedding. All my friends, my family, everybody except for you. You are gone. With my money, my rings. And your family and your parents didn't even know about it. How did you know that? A detective called him. Yeah. You ran away from home, didn't you? Just like you ran away from me. Why? I was scared. Of what, of me? No, of everything. I was afraid that if I told you that you would hate me forever. And the minute I left, I wanted to come back. I tried to write you. I wanted to be with you. I really did, Quinn. You expect me to believe that? It's true. Dad! Where are my rings? Quinn! <sighs> Go get him! Now! Or you're gonna get hurt. Okay. You understand me? I'll wait for you under that tree right outside your dorm. You go get me those rings! Okay. Maybe then I'll believe you. Why'd you lock the door? Did you tell the dean? She wasn't in. Look, I'm in a lot of trouble. And it would mean a lot to me if you would try to understand. I'm listening. Things will get even worse if I don't go out right now and take care of something. Janelle, we were once friends. Can't you give me till tomorrow morning? Okay. Thank you. Did you get him? Got something better. Look, I owe five thousand dollars on those rings. Stop so close to the college. Why, you think somebody's following us? You think they're after us? All right, you're right. They probably won't notice that the stuff is missing till tomorrow. So what are you worried about? <laughs> Nothing. Hey. Ah, cut it out! <laughs> what are you doing? Give me the keys, ah. Quinn. Ah. Quinn, ah. give me the keys, ah. right? Now. I don't like the way that you've been treating me lately, sweetheart. If 
I had known that you were a wife beater, I never would have gotten engaged. Calling the police. What for? To report you for stealing. I guess you can explain that too. You just saw me put them back. I know it's hard for you to understand because you've always had a father who you could go to who, who would just go and fix anything for you. All right. I, I owe a guy some money. A lot of money. He's been calling me and threatening me. Janelle, I couldn't steal from you. Even though I have nowhere else to get the money. Why didn't you ask to borrow it? Because you were so angry about your father. I did not think that'd be a good idea. Your new counselor wants to see you tomorrow morning. On Saturday? Did you tell her? Nope. Haven't told anyone yet. But she sent a yellow slip, so it must be important. Come in. Good morning. You want to see me? <laughs> yes. Don't you two have anything to say to each other? That isn't my daughter. I met your daughter at the airport. She was running away and she asked me to help her. Brianne wasn't happy at home, but she'd just gotten her scholarship. Why would she run away? She was pregnant. She was running off to San Francisco to get married. But her boyfriend was from Indianapolis. That's all she told me. That is all I know. Who are you? My name is, is Darcy Palmer. And I came here from Nevada. I ran away from home, too. My family hates me, and I didn't know what to do. And then I met Brianne, and she... She offered me this opportunity to come here and to pay. It's been five months. Anything could have happened to her. Did she say where in San Francisco she was going? She, she said she was going to call me, and she didn't. She never wrote. I never heard from her. I'm so glad you're here, though. I knew this couldn't last. It was never supposed to last this long, I promise you. You sent us pictures. You wrote us letters. You signed her name. I, I, I have to find my daughter. I, I gotta call the police. Please, let me handle this. We must report your daughter's missing, but I'd like to speak with the dean first. You'll have to vacate the dorm immediately. Beyond that, I don't know what will happen. Could you call Russell Polk for me? Mm. I would have figured this out. I would have told you. Do you think I could keep it a secret forever? Well, it's too late for that now, isn't it? So what? We're just gonna go on hitting each other forever? What difference does it make? 
They'll make a difference when you come home for visits. Your father invited me to stay with him at the house till I get back on my feet. When did you talk to my father? Miss Perry's office. And after what you did, he invited you to stay? Well, at least he had the decency to offer a little compassion. Brienne, you and I better have a talk. I'm surprised you're still speaking. <laughs> Come on. John will take care of your things. I want to show you the space that we fixed up for you. For me? Mm -hmm. Excuse me, is Janelle Polk there? Come in. Hi. I'm Evelyn Dwyer, Brienne's mother. The real Brienne. I need to talk to you. Please, sit down. I'm just trying to figure out what happened here. We had our problems. But Brienne wouldn't do this. I, I don't think that my ex-roommate is telling the whole truth. Oh, no, neither do I. But I don't think that counselor's telling the whole truth either. You see, Brienne was here over the summer for a face-to-face -face interview. That woman knew what she looked like. So, what? Oh, in God's name, could she not have known? I'd like the directory assistance for Reno, Nevada, please. I don't want you to think that this means that I approve of what you've done. Obviously, I don't. But I do understand your passion for art, for painting. You must have bought the whole store. <laughs> well, I didn't know exactly what you'd need. You probably know that Janelle isn't going to approve of this, even though it's temporary. Huh. That's putting it mildly. She feels quite threatened by you. I hope you'll be sensitive to that. Of course I will. I love her very much. I know. And if she doesn't want me here, I'll leave. Oh, no, no, I don't want that. I'm Janelle Polk. I'm looking for the parents of Darcy Palmer. What for? Who am I speaking with? I'm her uncle, Noah Palmer. She said she ran away. Who, who is this? I'm Brienne's roommate. Who? I'm sorry, Darcy. She said her name was Brienne. She's in New Hampshire. Well, it isn't exactly a professional studio, but at least it's a place to hang your imagination until uh, something else more permanent comes along, what's the matter? What? It's just that you've done so much for me. I've opened a few doors, that's all. How do you know it's her? Can you send us a picture? Uh-huh. Uh, I don't think I have one. Can you send me one? I could do that. Okay, listen, my father has a fax machine in his house. You can send it directly there. Do you know what I'd really like? Darcy, you don't, you don't, you don't have to, you don't owe me anything. This is for both of us.
That was my mother's. These are all my mother's things. Not the robe. This belongs to Samantha. It suits you. Look, if you're gonna make this a battle between the two of us, who do you think your father's gonna choose? Who did he choose last time? This could be so terrific for, for us, for the both of us. I mean, we could be like sisters. You know, I called you this morning. What, to warn me? Now, Janelle, do you know what was I supposed to do? Throw her out on the street? You know what? You don't owe her anything. Janelle, believe me. Believe me. You come first. You always. Do. I am not jealous. I'm yes. not asking you to understand. Then this. don't explain it to me. Please. I'm just asking you not to judge me or her. She's stolen things, she's cheated, she's lied. Maybe worse. What do you mean, maybe worse? First she says she's Brienne, now she says she's Darcy Palmer, and we don't even know if that's Jenna, true. Janelle, what she did was wrong, but that doesn't make her an evil person. What does it make her? She's misguided. I, I, she can be helped. I can help her. Uh, Janelle, don't walk away from me when I'm talking to you. Who are you? What do you mean? I talked to your uncle this morning, and he sent me this picture. Can I see it? He said that you, she, disappeared a year ago. This is me. You know, I was beginning to think that that would always be me. You know, just like all the others. What others? I lost count. They all disappeared. Just like Brienne. Just like you. They'll say you were jealous. That you were angry at your father. Ran away. Oh, <laughs> 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 
Janelle is very upset. She came after me with a pair of scissors. No, I didn't! She tried to kill me and tell you that I ran away! She slashed my canvas, and then she came after me. It was like, it was like there was another person inside of her that was about to explode. Russell, she needs help. Uh, I really think that she needs a sedative, and I'll stay with her. And you call the hospital, okay? Shut up! Somebody else didn't do this. You did this. This is who you are. You killed Brienne. And you probably killed Darcy, too. You're lying. I am not lying. And I don't even think that you know you're lying. But you're lying. Jim, my God, you hurt your Jim, brain. Don't, don't let her go! Relax, just relax. Shut up! No! Stop it! Let me go! Let me go! You don't hurt me! Nobody, nobody is going to hurt you. No! She's a... Don't let me go. Nobody's going to hurt you. Nobody's going to hurt you. But this is now a matter for the police. You just don't understand, do you? But that's okay. Because nobody understands my secrets. <laughs> I don't even care if you call the police. Because <laughs> no one can touch me. Brian Dwyer and Darcy Palmer, both gone without a trace. Dates of disappearance mesh nicely. She killed Brianne. And Darcy, too, probably. She said there were others. Well, let's see if we... Bingo, there it is. It's a special alert across 10 states. Looks like there's been a string of unexplained disappearances over the past six years, all leading back to a blonde teenager, Barbara Richards, who's described as childlike, and who walked away from her parents' burning farmhouse in Indio, California. Her parents were still inside. Good. I guess we were lucky. Well, we won't know for a few days, but I'd say you caught our killer force, Mr. Polk. Alan? Look, I know we gotta charge her, but it's hard to believe that this little girl's the one who started the fight. Yeah, well, this little girl's dangerous, so make sure you cuff her. Who are you? I was almost you. You don't believe me, do you? It's your word against theirs. They have all the money. I have nothing. Some guys get a lot of money. So what? Doesn't mean he gets spit on the law. What can I do? And they're gonna say terrible things about me. Can you help me? If they can't find any hard evidence against you, we got nothing to worry about.
Are these handcuffs really necessary? Once we're down the road, I'll take them off. 